are live. Hey guys, it's just a couple minutes after 1 p.m. Eastern Time. My name is Heather Boyd. It's Wire Lady TV and uh, welcome to my channel if you're not already familiar with it. And every week I go live at on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And it seems to be a good time because we could reach people in the UK. So if you're hopping on, uh, please introduce yourself. Say hello. I'm just going to pull up the video on my laptop so I can see what's going on. I can watch your comments. Hi Peggy, how are you? I'm just going to see that I can make sure I don't have to type replies to the comments, but I'd like to see them, so that's awesome. So today I'm going to do some troubleshooting of some wire letters. So I thought that would be a lot of fun. Hi Kathy, and this is inspired by Larissa in the Wire um, Art and Jewelry Makers Club on Facebook because quite a while back she was doing some wire letters with wire weaving and I thought they were super cool. And then a couple of weeks ago I was doing a workshop at a local gallery. Um, it's called Viva Vida Art Gallery in the Point Claire Village. I'll link it up below. But this is a, a local art gallery, contemporary gallery, and they carry my work there. I sell my jewelry there, but I also teach jewelry making, which is really fun. So I had a beginner jewelry making class and the girl really wanted to do her initial on a pendant. So I, make her, I made her a little initial, uh, something like this, the letter L. And very simple, and I thought, well, maybe I'll revisit that idea of doing wire weaving on uh, for the initials inspired by Larissa. So I'm not sure if Larissa watches the live streams, but she'll see the replay in the group. So that's awesome. And so what I'll do, as always, I'm going to flip the screen around and then we can just have a look at, uh, at what we're doing. Hey, Laura, how are you? Hi, Judy. Uh, do you go to Vermont sometimes to estate sales? No, I don't go to Vermont. The closest uh, I go is I go to um, New York City, which I love. Uh, I go once or twice a year, and that's a lot of fun. And I missed another comment. Wendy said hi. Hi, Wendy. How are you? So let's flip the screen around and make sure that we're set up here properly. Just takes me a minute. There's all my junk here. I'm going to bring this a little closer. Oh, two people in Florida. That's awesome. I really want to go to Florida this winter because... Uh, Montreal's pretty darn cold, so maybe I'll go visit you guys in Florida. Tell me where you are in Florida. And uh, I'm thinking more to go to Miami, but you never uh, you never know. So let me just pull this a little closer here so I can see what's going on. Here are the ones that I already started. Now there's something in the way here. I'm trying to figure out what is in the way because I want to to have a clear as vision. I'm trying to figure out what this thing is that's in the way. So let me figure that out. Oh, it's just the wire. There we go. Perfect. So if you guys can see, just let me know. I think that's good. So what I'm going to do is I like to start by showing you guys some projects that I, um, I've been working on recently. So let me just move the letters over for a second. Agnes says, I love your videos. Just wondering, do you ever solder? Okay, so I have used solder, uh, but only to do stained glass. So what I would do is, <laughs> this is, I'm just showing you guys some projects I'm working on. I had a order for a custom cake topper with three little bears on it, or actually not little bears. They were, um, I guess the people are, are um, rock climbers. So, and they wanted bears on their wedding cake topper. So that's one thing I've been working on. Another thing I've been working on are Adam, people love Adam earrings and Adam uh, necklaces and stuff. So that's something else. And then I'm going to pull something out uh, here. I'm missing all these comments. You're in Tampa. Oh, that's cool. Um, Tampa, Florida. Yeah. So I was thinking either Tampa or Miami uh, would be a great place to go this winter. So we'll We'll see how that goes. So I'm just going to show you guys one other thing I've been working on. This is something else that I, I sent this order out today. So it's a motorcycle with two people riding the motorcycle, and it's a pin. So this is just a, a picture, a photo I did to put up on Etsy. So this is, um, this is typical of the stuff I sell on Etsy, and uh, I do a lot of realistic things. So the Adam, Adam necklace is cute too, eh? Yeah, that's like on the invisible cord. Yay, motorbike, yes. So let's go back, and actually I'll show you some of the pictures that, um, the letters that Larissa did. So these are, these are 
uh, images I got from the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club. These are uh, pieces that Larissa created. created. Now, I'm not going to copy these, but I'm just going to use these to show you guys some inspiration. So if you want to get inspired, have a look at what she's doing in the group. It's super cool. So it looks like she's just done like a whole woven strip and then formed the letter and then added beads. So Trisha says, hi, Heather. Hi, hey, Trisha. How are you? So, yeah, so these are really cool. This, these are Larissa's. These are not my designs. These are Larissa created these designs in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club. And I just wanted to show you guys for some inspiration. So I thought we could kind of use this type of idea to do a basic weave. And I like the idea of adding beads. Aren't her letters gorgeous? I just love them. She does beautiful work. This one, especially with the with the little piece in the middle, I not I guess she just sort of left a space free and added a charm on top so that is super super cool and uh yeah so if you're not already a member of the group be sure to join that group and um and join the fun so here's a letter with this is just aluminum wire and then this one i just formed with aluminum wire and then i wove some beads in the middle so that's kind of cool and then what i did was i thought it would be a good idea just to have some images of wire letters. So I just went on Google and found some ideas for wire letters. So maybe I'll link up uh, where you could just find image or just Google search cursive wire letters on um, on Google and then you can uh, you can check it out. Wendy says we make me feel so inadequate. Uh, Wendy, just to let you know, I've been doing this for 30 years, so um, definitely have a little bit of a head start than you guys, but um, even now I learn a lot from people in the group. Like a lot of what's being done in the wire art group is very sophisticated work that I'm not even at that level. I do very different types of things. I do more kind of a figurative, realistic type of um, of imagery, like like for example, something that's typical of what I do is these um, "I Love You" earrings. Like this is sort of this is ready to ship out because um, from my Etsy shop. But I do have a tutorial too on how you can make this type of thing as well. I mostly do abstract things in my tutorials, but some of these things like. There's a lot of people that like this design. And I actually had a girl last night that asked me to add subtitles uh, on the video. Obviously, she's deaf, so I hadn't even thought about it. So I really appreciate people's feedback like that. So I went ahead and stayed up till 2 in the morning putting subtitles on my video for the ASL earrings and ornaments, which was really cool. So um, Jenna so says, hi, Heather and chat. Hey, Jenna Joe, how are you? And Jody is here, awesome, from the UK. So that's awesome. So guys, I'm not quite sure where to start with this. I think I'm going to, I like the idea of doing like a long strip, uh, kind of like um, what Larissa did and then forming it into a letter. So I think what I'll do for that, let's just start. You know, that's my motto is just start by starting. I actually have a blog called Start by Starting. And, uh, and that's sort of my whole mentality. Like, even if it's not perfect, you just start it and then and then you learn in the process and sometimes you have to scrap your project and other times you might be able to uh, morph it into something else or recuperate parts of it and turn it into something else so that's kind of cool so this is 20 gauge wire I thought it would be a good uh, gauge to start with and it is just a craft wire from Michaels it's nothing special you can use it's very similar to the artistic copper wire and so what I thought I would do is just start by forming, folding it in half. So we have kind of a starting port, point. And then from there, we can go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and shape it into any shape we want. And then you're going to need quite a bit of the wrapping wire. So for wrapping, I used, uh, I used, um, what's it called? 24 gauge wire. Sorry, I'm missing the chats here. When he says, I love the ASL, doing great. Thanks, Heather. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. Just got over a cold, but I'm much better. So if my voice sounds a little funny, it's just because I had a cold last week, but it's, um, I'm much, I, I don't stay sick 
long because I eat really well and and I just I don't let it get me down so I even when I'm sick I uh, I know I probably shouldn't but I go I'm still go out and about and I just I try to keep my distance from people but I I don't like it to stop me so Jenna Joe says I've watched uh, your blog. Awesome. Yes, I do a lot of interviews with fellow artists and entrepreneurs in a series. It's like um, a podcast series called uh, Stories of Starting. So that's really interesting. If you're interested in podcasts, I have I have that podcast. So that's really fun. So um, Jetta Joseph's glad to feel uh, you're feeling better. I'm feeling much better. So now, guys, I'm just wondering how we could do this in a way that we're going to just um, be quick with it. So because I'm not a professional at at um, wire weaving, I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and wind it a couple of times. I'm I don't want this to be too long. I think I'm going to trim it again because I don't want this to get in the way. This looks like it's about six inches. So let's just go ahead because I did do one in the sample that had that had actually. Um, beads woven in but I think I'm going to do one that's just wire a little bit like Larissa said I uh, did and then we'll just go from there so the idea for this would be to let's just hold this together let me just really it's the it's the starting part that's difficult right so so Peggy says when I wrap my trick is to spread your arms out and hold the weaving wire from fingertip to fingertip and cut that length Okay, let me wrap my head around that. What do you mean? So it's spread your arms out. Oh, so it's a long length, like from your arm's length. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's a really good idea because sometimes it's hard to know how much to do. Uh, luckily, you know, with these kind of troubleshooting ones, I don't mind if I have to um, if I have to add a piece. Um, and even sometimes with my work, you know, if I'm working on a piece that's quite intricate and requires a lot of wire. Uh, you know, I used to require that all my pieces were made with one piece of wire, but now if, for the sake of, you know, not scrapping pieces that, you know, might need more than one piece of wire, I'm okay with adding pieces of wire if I need to, because otherwise um, you're gonna waste a lot of wire and sometimes you just need more wire than you thought. So so if you can find a way to discreetly add it. In fact, somebody in the group today, in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers uh, Club asked me or asked the group how to finish your, uh, your ends so they're not scratchy. So maybe I'll just try to, um, when I finish the end, just show you guys um, the best way to do that. Uh, it's uh, it sounds like it would be easy to do but it's not like even when I do earrings sometimes it's very very difficult to finish the ends because um because they can they can catch on things and scratch things so do you see what I'm doing here I'm just doing a very very basic weave so I'm basically going around like weaving it all the way around the wire once and then bringing it over to the other side and making kind of like a uh infinity type sign like a, a eight number eight so I'm going around that twice and then this one go around twice and I'm going to, to try to do this quickly what I might try to do is I'm just going to spread them out a little more than I might normally uh, just for the sake of getting it done and there might be a quicker way to do this if you guys have tips on wire weaving, please let me know because it's definitely not my forte. So I'm just looking at the comments. Oh my, oh boy, I'm missing a lot. So something about, I wind mine around kimono bobbins. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, and Brandy says new subscriber. Love your videos, thank you so much. And let's see, B uh, idea, my fine wire has been getting knotted. Yeah, wire, yeah, wire can definitely get knotted. This 24 gauge wire is pretty good. So yeah, Google later. So for the toggle thing, yeah, I wind my weaving on, whoops, there we go, on a bobbin. Yeah, that's a, actually a really good idea. Yeah, just to wind it on a little bobbin. I know they have those bobbins for wool. Um, but probably just on a regular bobbin or something would be good. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, I really don't do a lot of weaving. So if you guys have some suggestions for weaving, uh, definitely put them in the comments. And, and 
I can only imagine how many hours some of these things take that people do that they that they post in the group because some of them are so intricate and it must be really hard on your fingers like even just doing this right now I find it's very it's very hard on my fingers so so it's uh, I can imagine when you're doing a big piece that it would be really it would be really hard so you know what I'm going to do I'm going to just because like like I said time wise I don't want to spend too much time doing this so what I'm going to do is actually spread these out so do you see how I've done them and then I'm I'm kind of pushing them apart and that's going to be and that reminds me of doing like the the one that I did with the spring that could be really interesting too to do maybe something with the spring Oh, the last time you tried it, you cut your finger with wire weaving? Oh, that really is bad. Yeah, that's hard, eh? Yeah, I would say don't do it too tight. Yes, yeah, it's true. Yeah, you don't want to hold it too tight. Because I know sometimes when we do our wire work, and we're if you're gripping the tools and the wire too tight, sometimes your fingers can even lock. Like, I know my husband... He's been making the wire bicycles for about 35 years and sometimes he'll be holding the pliers and working and his hand will like lock in place and that's that's kind of scary. I guess you have to kind of shake out uh, shake out your hand if that happens. So so yeah, we've gotten quite far with this. I think I'll go just a little bit further. And like I said, if you guys have more, if you ever, if you have any questions too about anything wire related, uh, feel free to ask here in the chat. Uh, ask me, ask any of the members, because uh, I think we all inspire each other and we all help each other to um, to find uh, solutions and stuff. So you had your hand lock up and it's scary, eh? Isn't it scary? It really is. And then you think, oh my God, I'm never not going to be able to work. But if you, uh, you know, you can shake it out a bit. You can just give it a break. I think it's important to take breaks because otherwise um, you're just going to really, really, you know, damage your hand type of thing. So I weave wrap uh, my skein tape around my finger. Oh, tape around your fingers. Yes, yeah, so they don't... Uh, so that yeah, I know I know my husband puts duct tape on his fingers sometimes too. So, but then you don't want to get the wire sticky too. So you just you just have to find some solutions. At one point, I remember I tried wearing gloves, and it didn't it didn't really work too well. So, so now what I'm gonna do is I cut way too much wire. So I think I'm just gonna cut a little bit off. Okay. So what we have here is. Honestly, not a beautiful piece of weaving, but you could definitely do it tighter if you wanted. I'm going to just try to find some beads that we'd like to add to the project. So I have a bunch of different beads. Are my uh, This is my tray of favorite beads. So I have these little miracle beads. I love these little hematite beads. So I might get out some hematite beads, some little faceted beads. I'll see what I have for the faceted beads. I don't know if I want blue. Um, I have all kinds of different. Oh, purple's nice. I have some nice purple miracle beads, which are really nice. And then even the, the pearly ones are nice as well. So I'll just get out a little variety of beads. Oh, here's some purple too. I don't know if that one matches so well. But And then I'll look at my other beads. I price the Miracle Beads. Oh my gosh. So the Miracle buy Beads I buy on Etsy. And there's a shop that I buy from that actually has free shipping. And uh, they're pretty they're pretty affordable. So I could link up where I buy the, um, the Miracle Beads uh, below. Uh, this is my other tray of beads. So I'll just um, pull these ones out here. This was actually my very first tray of beads that that I ever uh, that I ever had, and I just I kind of add to it and subtract to it and stuff. So this is uh, yeah, this is a really nice kind of collection. I'm just gonna pull out a bunch of different ones, and then we can just choose them as we go. I'm gonna do a variety of some of the um, the glass beads and some of the faceted beads and just some different ones on here. I'll just pull a bunch out and then we can go from there. So I think that's good. So I hit EB, eBay high. Okay, yeah, did you guys get any, um, did you guys buy some stuff at Cyber, Cyber Monday? I meant to do some shopping Cyber Monday online and all I ended up getting was some boxes from Staples to ship our orders with. 
So, uh, but uh, let me know if you guys got some good deals on Cyber uh, Cyber um, Monday. And I was going to actually put some a Cyber Monday special um, in my Etsy shop, but I've been busy with Christmas, so I said, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that because things take so much time. So here are some letters. So let's see which one we can do. I've already done the L. And you know what I like? I really like that A. So maybe I'll just do an A one. So Peggy says I got some wire from Fire Mountain Gems. Yes, Fire Mountain Gems is a great company. Unfortunately, we're in Canada, and so it's pretty pricey uh, to for uh, they charge a lot for shipping. But the the killer is customs. When it comes through customs, uh, we, we pay a lot of customs fees. So I don't really like buying from uh, from them anymore. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to form the A. So I'm going to take this piece here and I'm going to just form it around. I'm going to try it by eye. Uh, I was going to do a loop at the top, but you know what? I don't think I have to do a loop because we're going to be able to stick um, a little jump ring or a hook right in there. So rather than try to bend it that way, I'm going to bend it on itself. I think it's going to be here. Jody says same here with customs. It's killer. Yes, I know it's it's uh, it's really crazy. So if we just bend that down here, so already it's starting to look like an A. And the other thing you could do with something like this is you can mix wires. Like say you don't want to pull this one back here, you can add another wire to do the cross crossbar on there. That would work. But because I'm trying to figure out this wire weaving design, I'm just going to bring this around. Okay, and I might have to adjust it a little more. And then if I bring it this way, okay, it's gonna just go around and bring it that way. It's going to look a little bit, like I'll show you, compare it to this. Basically, I'm following this design, but instead of making a loop at the top, I'm just bending it right over because making the loop would be really difficult. So if we bring this around here, this is here. So we have one end already that's finished. So that's great. I could have actually made that end a little bit longer, but I think I'm just going to go with this as it is. So now we can see, we can push this in a little bit more. Okay. And, uh, you know, you could, as you see how much weave you need, you could push it in a little bit more if you like it just to tighten it up. Okay, so now what I think I'm going to do is take this. I See, I've left a little extra bit of wire here. And what I want to do is I'm going to bring it back in here and put it here. And I'm kind of going to sew it together. Okay, we're just going to sew it together. We're going to go through there and then through this way and back through to make it nice and solid. So we're sewing with wire, which is kind of cool. And we're going to bring this right through. And so already we have our basic shape for the weave. Just picture it if the weave would be tighter, it would look that much better. But because it would take me twice as long to do that, I'm not going to do that. And so what I'm going to try to do now is I'm actually going to try to make little spirals here to make it a little fancy. Now I'm going to show you this one that I did. I tried to do a little spiral on either end and it just looked a little goofy, so I decided not to do this. I cut the spirals and just did it like this. This one, I find it a little boring. I find it a little like just bead, 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 bead. So this was one of those experiments that didn't really work out, but you have to try things before you realize that they work or not, right? The One of the, my favorite ones was the L which is super simple. And this was the one I made for the girl in the workshop. And it's just basically, I bent the wire in half and did it. I'll do one like that to show you guys too. So here we go. I'm going to just try to form a little spiral on there. Uh, so I'm just watch uh, the comments. It's starting to get more bead places in the UK, but not a great selection. Yeah, that's the trouble if there's not... Uh, I'm surprised there's not more selection because I certainly have a lot of people that follow me from the UK and that are interested in jewelry making. So I'm really surprised that it's not easy to get supplies. That's that's unfortunate. You'll have to open a bead store, which would be a big 
a big undertaking. But so now I'm going to do these spirals. I could do one one way and one the other, but I'm going to try to do them both the same direction and see how it looks. You could also do one spiral and then clip the other one. You could definitely do that. There's sometimes the hardest part of jewelry making is just these decisions like do I do this? What beads do I choose? I find the decision making uh, a little bit painstaking sometimes. So this is kind of funky. I just did a couple of like little spirals. Maybe I, I should have cut the this top wire a little longer just to make it uh, them two different sizes, but that's sort of interesting. And then what you could do at that point is you can actually um, add some beads to it. So maybe I'm going to do that. I'm going to add beads. And you know what might be fun is I'm going to take a picture of it before I add beads because sometimes I do something and then I add to it and then I don't like it anymore. So this way at least I'll have a record and I don't know if this is going to work. If I bring my iPad in here, where is this thing? There we go. So I'm going to bring the iPad. I'm going to take a picture like that and then I have a record of it. If I decide to, um, if I decide I prefer it that way, then I know, then I'll have a record of it, right? So here we go. So now we can get some beads. Let's get some beads going. Okay. And battery's going. See you guys later. Okay. Okay, Jody. We'll see you later. Yeah, that's, that's the trouble when your battery dies. That's, uh, that's it. So now let's try to put a little bead on there. This one's rolling away just to see how it looks looking good though babe. thank you yeah we're, we're doing we're troubleshooting today I don't think we're gonna get the whole alphabet done obviously but we're gonna have fun with it so here we go so there if we put like a little bead on here and then maybe I'll just go ahead and same thing you can kind of wind this through a little bit okay and we'll just wind it through a little bit Oh, that's not, didn't go quite in where I wanted to. So you could back it up. And this is where you can definitely add more wires if you want. Yeah, you could definitely add some more wires. So maybe I'll just do a couple of more little beads here just to see how it goes. This was a random little pearl bead that I found in my stuff. I don't even know. Some of these little pearls, you guys probably know, they have such tiny little holes that it's, pretty well just the 24 gauge that's going to fit in there because otherwise it's just uh, they're not going to fit the um, the wires aren't going to fit in there so the 24 gauge seems okay with that so if we put just a couple of little beads on there okay and then we could always go up and put one up to the other side so either you get a new wire or you weave this one back see we could this one I might run out of it might get too short, but if I'm just gonna weave it back just for the sake of doing it pretty quickly. So if I weave it back, then we can add another bead up there. So why don't we, we could even add like a gold bead might be interesting. So if we add the bead here, um, it's a little bit big. So there's the gold bead, or let's see if it looks like better with the little hematite one because the gold ones, I don't know. What do you guys think? We'll put the, the hematite or the gold. Maybe I'll put the gold one, so we'll see. Just to give it a little variety. Okay, we'll stick that one on. And yeah, we don't have a lot of wiggle way with this wire because it's, um, it's a little short. But like I said, you could add another wire, but I think I'll just go ahead and finish it off here. Okay, Paula says hi from Oklahoma. Hey, how are you? What's it like in Oklahoma right now? It's not too bad in Montreal. It's a little bit um, little bit warmer than it has been, which is nice. It was snowing this morning, but uh, it, we had a really cold spell, and now it's not too bad. So so I've just attached this these on here. Let's move these beads. Okay fine without it too. Yeah, I could have maybe not put another bead there too. So this just gives you a little bit of an idea. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe we don't need that bead 
it's a little it's a little big so if you decide you don't want a bead then you just take it off that's easy enough okay so we'll just do that and then we just remove that there we go I think that's better yeah we'll just keep it simple so and sometimes it is better to have an uneven number of beads as well so let's keep it super simple we could definitely add more beads if we want but it's kind of I'm kind of liking it I think it's I think it's pretty cute so so there's one and then let's do one in this simple technique with the double wires and I'm just going to look pull up my um my letters again to see which one we want to do so okay whoever votes first tell me what letter that we should do and whoever says the first whoever votes first and and chooses a letter that's what I'll do Kathy says better yes yeah it's definitely uh it's def uh g okay so Wendy says g so let's see what the g looks like I hope you didn't choose oh my gosh that one looks a little that looks a little difficult, <laughs> but I I promised, right? So let's do the G, and then maybe we could do an S after. So we'll do the G, and then, so what I'm going to do for the G is I'm going to take 20-gauge wire, depending on how big you want it, and uh, we can... We can use 20 or 18 or even bigger if you wanted. So I'll just get a piece that's maybe about 15 inches long, we're going to cut a piece and seems to be the easiest way to do this is just to take your wire and fold it in half okay so we'll just fold it in half just do a little bend like that and then just squeeze it together and so at that point you can start forming your letter and so for the G I'm going to just also check if there's another G that's a little different than that one to see if it's, I think they're all done more or less in the same way. Oh, there's that one too. See, there's this type of G too. So which is better, that type of G or, where's the other one? Uh, that one or this G. See how they're different? So there's this one that's sort of like up, up and around, or there's, where's the other one? Mm -mm -mm. Where did that other G go? Ooh, this one's nice. Where'd it go? Let's see if we can find that one. This one's kind of nice too. What do you think of that one? The second one cursive, yeah. So let's go back. That one was really cute. Okay, let's find it. That like that one type of thing. Okay, so let's do that one. I think I think that one's good. Now where did we go? There we go. Something like that. Interesting. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a little distracted. Just sort of a simple one like that. Okay, so let's just form one and see. Yeah, I think I like that one too. So if we, wait, I'm totally confused now. There's this one too. There's this one too that's quite nice with a little with a little G thing. Hmm, let's look at that one. No, maybe not. Okay, I'm wasting, I'm wasting a lot of time. Let's try that one. Ah, <sighs> okay. Oh, and someone says, Janice says the first one. So what I'm going to do is, soup, soup. I think I'm going to try that one just to see. So if we, let's move this over, and I'm going to take this and then just curve it around. Because the idea is you need to start the inside wire first, the easiest one first. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good plan. And also the easiest and also the one with the least amount of, you know, kind of overlap and bending because when you have two wires, it's a little bit tricky. So if we bring this one around, okay, around like that, and I'm just going to try to form it here. So if we bring this around, okay, we're just going to follow them together, okay, like that. 
And then it looks like they've sort of brought that down. I'm not sure if it's going to look much like a G. Yeah, I'm just going to see what we can do here because it is it is definitely a very tricky tricky letter. So I'm going to around here. Yeah, some of them are really stylized like even the um yeah, I think if we go down and around it should be okay. So let's just try this. So Let's bring this one down. We're going to bring that one down here. Okay, we'll bring this one down. And it's difficult with a with a double wire. Actually, you know what this reminds me of? Um, Matt, in Matt's Crazy Art, does a lot of designs with double wires. And I really love the way they look. I really love the effect of them. And um, whenever I see somebody do things with double wires, I always think about him because it's a really, uh, it, it just makes it that much more fancy, you know? And actually, he goes live on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I don't know if you guys watch his live stream. You can make the letter C. Yes, I could. that could have totally been a letter C, which might have been better. So I'm just going to see where I'm going with this because we're just going around. Yeah, I have a feeling this one might or might not work. It looks a little bit more like a C. But I'm just going to play around with it and see. So if we bring this one around here, okay. And then I think I'm gonna do the S because I think the S is going to be much, much easier. So if we bring this one around here, because you have to, the, the key is to figure out how to finish it. So this is sort of looking a little bit like a cursive G, but the trouble is when you have to finish it, then it's then it then it's very tricky. So this is sort of the idea of what it looked like in the image. And but then the question is, you know, what do I do? What do I do with the extra wires? So there are a couple of things you could do. Um, but the thing is, you also want them to hold it shaved. Like if you just cut them, they might come apart. But the middle, like the inside one, you could definitely clip it. Okay, so, so we start with that. And actually, this is sort of along the lines of how do you finish the ends so they're not pokey. So what you would do is you would want to cut this like right in here, okay, right in there, as close as you can to the edge. And then so that end doesn't stick out, I take my flat pliers and I just push them so they're flush. I was trying to explain that in the wire art group this morning and I'm not sure if I explained it well, but when you do that, you no longer have a scratchy end because it's like flat against the other wire, which is really cool. So we're going to bring this around here. And because this might, like it's not too bad, like it's pretty, it's a little warbly, but so that, that can work like that. And then if you did want to add a bead to it, we can just tighten this one up a little bit more. So if you do add a bead, it's actually going to be have a twofold um, uh, a twofold uh, usage because it's going to hold it together a little bit too. So let's go ahead and see what kind of bead we can put on there. Like we could put that one, but that's not that interesting. Let's just put a small one because I've made this so small. Jennifer Joe says I like it. Yay! Well, at least it looks somewhat like a G, not perfect. But see, you could add a bead there, but I don't know even if it's necessary to add the bead. But let's just try it because the bead would help to hold it together. Whoops. So the bead, that's the advantage of the bead. It would help to hold it together. And then we can add some more like that. But I think the problem now is maybe this wire is a little bit thick for wrapping. So let's just try it. We're here, we'll just try it. So we're going to wrap it with this 20 gauge wire that we use to make the, which, that we use to make the actual letter. But as you see, it's very, very thick. So in theory, you could definitely get a thinner wire to to use for that after. And then what I'm going to do is bring this up. Sometimes you have to give it a little bit of a help bending the wire so it will actually bend in the right place. And so this will be nice and flat on there. And then if we go again and do maybe one more little bead there, 
I'm going to see if I'm going to, I'm just going to find a smaller bead to add to that. We have hematite and maybe just to add a little pearl on there just to, and the same thing, we'll just do three. Uh, we'll just do three little beads just to give it an idea and we're going to put that on there. Okay, so that's the idea. It doesn't really look like a G, but these are really just to give you guys an idea of how to approach things like this to see what works, see what what doesn't work. And as you can see, this doesn't this one didn't work super well, but it somewhat looks like a G. So there's a start, and then let's try the S. So we'll try the S, and then that will be good for today. And let's just try it. I'm not going to do the big wire weaving thing because it's going to take too long, but let's see if we could do something with the thinner wire to make it a little more fancy without actually wire weaving. So, uh, Wendy says, very helpful to see your thought process. Well, thanks. Thank you so much because I think that's, uh, that's the whole thing is just trying to see how you get from point A to point B. And like I said, I've been doing this for a really long time, but still sometimes it takes me a long time to figure things out because, because it's um, there's so many different de directions you can go and so many different effects that you can have. So, uh, so you just have to try. And sometimes I'll start a project and then I'll scrap it and I won't look at it again for months or even years. And then when you go back to it with fresh eyes, sometimes it's uh, you you find the solutions to uh, to what you need to do. So now I'm going to just start by just doing the shape of the S. I use markers to get the the round forms. I have a, a ring cone as well. I just don't have it out right now. And then what if we just bring this other one around? Okay, we're going to bring the other one around here. Maybe that'll be our top one, actually. Why don't we bring this around here? We'll bring that, will be our top one. And then I'm gonna finish it at the bottom. So we're gonna bring this one around here. Okay. I have four pieces I've made that I don't like. Oh yeah, I have so many pieces that I don't like. Sometimes I'll throw them out. Sometimes I'll just put them in a big box. Or sometimes I'll take them apart and do other things with them. And sometimes when I'm about to throw them out, my daughter will pick them out of the garbage and keep and keep them or fix them you know sometimes she'll take one and then she'll have another idea of how I can actually make it work some way so uh, often uh, more th two heads are better than one and sometimes more than two heads are better than one so so it's uh, but don't automatically just completely give up on things because often it'll lead to something else which is great so now I'm just going to try to do like a double kind of thing for the S just to get it going. And then we're going to add some other wire and uh, beads to it. So my daughter adopted an octopus. I was going to trash. Oh, that's so sweet. I love that. See, one person's trash is another person's treasure. And uh, yeah, we, we all find different things beautiful. So it's really, it's really good to... Um, to be open and, and ask for advice because often when I'm working on something, I'll ask uh, either my daughter or my husband for advice on what direction to go and they have some great ideas. So here's just the start of the S. So I think what I'm gonna do now is just grab some other, uh, the 24 gauge wire and we can try to add some beads. Oh, you know what else I was thinking to try was to do like a little spiral thing. So let me just cut a couple of pieces of the wire Okay, because I thought um, it would be really cute to do like a little springy thing as well, as well. I don't know if you guys saw, but I had done that Tip Tuesday video about how to make a spring, which was uh, really cool. So, but I like I like the the effect of a spring to um, you know how it looks. I find it really uh, really cool. And so maybe what we could do is just wind that around a little bit. Okay, so I'll get a just a, a stick and I'm going to try to do a quick little spring thing just to make it a little more fancy and basically I'm just taking a, I think it's 1.6 millimeter aluminum wire and I'm just going to wind it around. I actually have one of those little spring makers uh, that, I, that I made myself 
that's useful for this, but because I don't have it handy, basically just do this. I know some people use a drill to do this type of spring as well, which is really interesting. So you could definitely um, attach a, a wire to your to your dr electric drill and make a little spring like that. So, uh, uh, okay, so I'm gonna try to get back to some of these comments. I'll probably take them apart. Yeah, for beginners, what do you think we should start from? Yeah, so for beginner jewelry makers, uh, I think the best projects are just really basic earrings or sometimes even rings. Uh, you can, if you're not super comfortable with proportions, you can always get a jig. They have the artistic wire jig kits or other kinds of jigs. Um, you could start with things like that. Uh, just basically start doing earrings with with little head pins and beading and then you can add some wires and things and but if you search on YouTube beginner easy beginner jewelry making projects or wire jewelry making projects there's a ton of like really easy beginner uh, videos that can get you started um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing these uh, letters because they're a little tricky but uh, Kathy says I use my drill for twisting the wire yeah the drill is a great idea so just to give you an idea, so if we have like a little coil, I'm going to use that on our piece as well. So what I want to do to start is I'm going to just leave that at the side for now. I'm going to cut these a little shorter and I'm going to attach them together with a 24 gauge wire just to hold the ends together and then we'll figure out where we're going to go from there. Uh, thank you very much. Very helpful. Awesome. Well, yeah, and, and there's a lot of support in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club on Facebook. If ever you guys um, have questions, you can ask in the group and either I can help or other members of the group can help uh, with your questions. So that's uh, that's a really good a good resource. So let's find a few more beads. And we're going to put together, oops, that's ugly. So we'll put together a few little ideas for beads that that one doesn't really match. I like the pearl. Uh, did I use the gold one already? I don't think I did, but now I'm not sure what I did with the, uh, oh, here's the gold one. So here's a few things. Okay, so let's just go ahead and try to put a few beads on here. Okay, we're going to go around here and start I'll put the white one first and yeah you could literally spend 24 24 7 just like working on projects and stuff and and never be completely satisfied because there's so many different directions that you can go with them so Kathy says I made a dragon eye hand paint and woven ring too and I learned okay from Yvonne Williams yes I've seen those styles with the dragon eye those are really cool yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm just reading your, your comics comments. I'm afraid I'm missing some of them. But yeah, those dragon eye dragon eyes are um very cool and I've never tried those. So I should definitely try that sometime. I think that's really fun. And I actually had a customer ask me for some medieval earrings and I wasn't quite sure what direction to go with that. So I made some dragon earrings where which were kind of cool so I don't know if you guys have ideas for medieval earrings that would be interesting I, I definitely would I'm open to some ideas for for designs and different things I could do um the my friend at the gallery suggested some uh what do you call it Dra uh dram like drama mask but like the masquerade type of mask so she thought that would be cool so I have this spring here and I'm wondering what I should do with it but maybe I'll just randomly kind of wind it around. I don't know if that's going to work. If I just let's see, let's see what we can do with this. I'm just going to play around with it and see, see what it happens. Okay. Okay. Try making islands. I can try making the islands here in the Azores. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. That's very cool. I've done some silhouettes of uh, states and Italy. I did the silhouette of Italy out of wire and also I did um, 
uh, Iceland. I, saw, I had a request for a wedding cake topper in the shape of Iceland. So that was kind of cool. Okay, this is getting a little crazy, but this is sort of the idea of just just experiment, you know, and, and I'm actually saving you guys time because if this works, if this does not work out at all, then you'll know, do not try this. But I kind of like this idea of just winding this around a little bit. That's kind of making an interesting effect. Maybe I should have done that from the beginning. So, so it's when you try things like this, that you get some ideas. Like I think rather than just leave, leaving it like a spring, because it doesn't look super nice. It kind of looks mechanical. But what if we just, okay, spread these a little, okay? Spread them out a little bit. I'm gonna put this back on here. And I can always add more beads after, but what I'm gonna do for now is just add that there, okay? And I have these springs that I've spread out a little bit, and I'm just going to wind them around and see what happens. What if you did daggers, oh, with the medieval with a red stone? That's a fabulous idea. I love that. Oh, I'm definitely going to try something like that. A dagger with a stone. That's a great idea. Yeah, I definitely, I'm definitely going to try that. Thank you so much. Yeah, see, this is, I would never think of these things. Like, I'm, I don't have any kind of knowledge or interest of medieval things, but uh, I think that's, I think that's a great idea. So guys, these, the spring did get a little bit distorted, but I'm just gonna keep winding it around like this. It looks a little funny and kind of um, a little wonky, but the interesting thing about this, it gives it some uh, texture. You know, that's the interesting thing about the spring, is it's giving it a little bit of an interesting texture. So even if this, particular piece doesn't turn out 100%. It's it's sort of given me an idea on how to give the piece a little bit of texture. So now to finish it, you're going to have to string this through the end. Okay, just bring that around here. String it through the end and just wind it through a couple of times and then we have to clip it off. So we're going to clip it off and then you can always do a little extension wire at the top to have uh, put a jump ring through. What about cat with Christmas hat earrings? Ooh, now that would be good. I like that idea. Yeah, that would be really fun. And people love cats, so that would be cool. So now we have, you know, it's a bit kind of messy, but I, I definitely like the idea. Let me cut a few of these other wires off. And then you can always, if you do want to add beads, you can always bring this wire like string it around, gradually bring it around back to the top. You could add another wire if you wanted to, but just for the sake of keeping it simple, I'm gonna bring it up here and then maybe put another couple of little beads at the top. And it kind of looks like wool from a sheep, but I find it super cute. So I think we could definitely do something with this. I'm going to put another little bead at the top, maybe a little miracle bead up here. And then maybe I'll put another couple like really little beads up top to see what I can do. Oh, I have some little beads here. I have these little seed beads that I put at the side here. And then I have also these little gold beads, which might be too small. That would be a pendant. Yeah, it would be cool as a pendant, this. Yeah, I think that would work. This bead is like way too small. You can't really see much about it. So let me look in my other beads to see what I have. Oh, here's a silver one. I don't know if, whoops, no. Let me just find this other bead. Okay. There's a hematite one. And let's see. There's a little silver one. Yeah, I don't know if silver is gonna match. Well, probably silver is better than gold though, because it'll show up. So let's just put a little silver one on there. Okay. Even if it doesn't fit, it's all right. We're gonna try it. And then we'll put another little, the little seed bead. And then what I'll do is when I'm done, I'll bring you guys up closer so we can see what we did around there. Ooh, I really don't like that silver one. Ugh. Okay, let's remove the silver one. 
Okay, and maybe I'll just put another little pearl on there or something. Yeah, the silver one did not look good at all. So we're gonna put the that one on there and then maybe one more. Let's see, we'll put the little one. I don't know if this is gonna be a good one or not, but we can try it. it might be a little dark. It's a little bit dark, but I think it's all right. So we're gonna put this one, and then around here, don't forget info on Miracle Beads. Yes, definitely, yeah, I'll, I'll add the link for the Miracle Beads uh, in the description. And I know it's in some of my other videos, but I'll definitely do that. So guys, what I'm gonna do is before I clip this off, I think I'm gonna go ahead and make a little loop with this so we can hang it on a necklace. So let's go ahead and do that too because that's something you always have to keep in mind when you do make a pendant. You want a way to, to uh, hook it on, right? So if we just do a little double loop, and if you do it perpendicular to your piece, you could put it directly onto a cord, but if you add, uh, if you put it parallel to your piece, you can add a jump ring, and then that will, um, you'll be able to hang it onto a cord. So I'm gonna just do it parallel to the S, and then that way, if I wanna put it on a cord, I can just add a little jump ring, okay? So there's, see I've done like a little double loop here to add a cord. And then now, to finish the ends, wow, that looks pretty funky. So so I think where Heather is, it's 1.50, yes, it's almost two o'clock, so which means we've been going an hour, so we better, we better finish up, guys. So now what I'll do is I'll just, um, I kind of like the way that these had little springs, so if you need to do a little quickie, extra bit of spring, and I have a little bit of wire left, so I'm just going to bring this back and wind this around here just to make a spring with the rest of my 24 gauge wire. We'll just go ahead and do that. Okay, just a little bit. And then we can maybe bring it back around just to finish it off. Okay, we'll wind it around. And if you guys hear noise, I think they're cutting trees in our front yard. So that's unfortunate it's at this time, but it's all right. We're just about done. So yeah, there, I did a little extra little squiggle at the end because I happen to have wire and it looks good because it makes it look more complete. And now the question guys, with these two ends, should I do little spirals at the end? Should I cut them or should I do like little spirals like I did on the ends here? So you guys vote spirals or no spirals and that's where um that's that's how i'll finish it off so i just need to know in the chat if you guys can let me know if i should do little spirals there or not spirals yay awesome okay so let's do it let's do the spirals so i'm just gonna bring that around here make sure this is yeah so what we want to do is to do the spiral what I'm going to do is, because this wire is quite soft, I'm just going to, it's always good to cut it flush at the end, and then take your round pliers. Sometimes I, I form the, the loop first. I'll do it both ways. This way is just doing it freehand starting in the middle. So this is one way to do it. Okay, we'll just do it like kind of freehand around here. Start, starting in the middle. Okay, there. And then for this one, let's do it the other way. I'm gonna cut it a little shorter just because it's always good to have things a little bit asymmetrical. And the other way I do spirals is I start with the, um, the round form first. So you could get a, maybe with a pen, I find it's the easiest way. So you can hold it. It's not super long this wire, but basically what I do is would be I would form the loop first like I would form the round part first just to give it a head start and then I get my pliers and hold the end and bring it around right in there okay we'll just bring it right around sometimes it's hard to know which way to hold it if we hold it like upside down or inside out there we go so we're just going to bring that in a little bit 
Okay. In there. And then how to get the, the spirals flat is you just take take the flat pliers and, and put, put it in there. So yeah, I like it with the two different size spirals. Maybe open this one up a little bit more. If it's too tight, you can just open the spiral up and that makes it a little more interesting to have them two different sizes. And there we go. So we ended up making a couple of things. So let's have a look. I'm gonna put them down on the table. So we did this one, the S, and we did the A, okay? And then we did the G, which wasn't, a, you know, it wasn't super successful, but it's kind of interesting. Yeah, and then these were the ones I did previously was the L and the J. So let me know. I'm going to remove this uh, camera and bring it closer. And you guys let me know which one is your favorite. So which one do you like best out of all of these? And I'll take a photo and put them in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club. You guys let me know your favorite. And then I'm going to turn the camera around and say... Goodbye. There we go. So yeah, definitely let me know which one you like the S and the and the A, all of them. Yay! That's fantastic. Cool. And S and A. Perfect. Well, yeah, I'm going to put some pictures in the Facebook group. If you guys have any questions, um, be sure to let me know. You could either post them in the group or you could even um, message me at info at heatherboydwire.com. Uh, thank you for staying on for so long. We were on for an hour today. That's a, that's a long one. That's a good one. And uh, yeah, so Saturday I'll be posting another video. Uh, Tuesday, Tip Tuesday, which is always fun. Janine says, thanks, Heather. J and D. J and D. Did we do a D? I don't think we did a D. Uh, there's all great for the A and the L. Nice. Yeah, I like the L too. It's very simple. So, so yeah, so thanks, thanks guys. And we'll definitely see you in the Facebook group and we'll see you next Wednesday live at 1 p.m. Eastern time and have a great time preparing for the holidays and have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon. Whoops, I have to cross that out.